Okay, so we're going to retest uh, the bandwidth and mul multiplication factor. Um, Jeff has the uh, platform and ground plane done. Um, and as soon as we're done doing a few experiments with this to um, find out a little bit more about this, we'll put this on a couple sawhorses and then uh, free up the bench. But what we're doing right now is basically the same as the other bandwidth tests, except we're just going to retest it because we do have this uh, ground plane now. So we got the meter on uh, 10 volts and we have this field strength meter set so that at the peak uh, resonant frequency this uh, needle will peak right at the end of the red. So if I just step back a little bit so I'm not interfering with the... Uh, see, you may or may not be able to see this in the, in the video but if I put my hand here the needle drops because I'm adding a lot of capacitance and uh, dragging it down. Same as that side and if I come in kind of through the middle right here the needle almost does, it doesn't even move, it doesn't even phase it right here. The neutral uh, spot so to speak. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave it at um, 10 volts on here. That's the maximum output on the uh, signal generator and the needle is all the way at the peak and what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the uh, frequency which is 5674 I'll round it to uh, let's see center 5674 kilocycle and that is uh, in resonance so what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the frequency by one hundredths and uh, I'm going to do that until the needle drops to roughly about seventy percent which is roughly about halfway in the middle would be about oh, three quarters less. yeah um, maybe a little bit less than uh, a one quarter drop so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go backwards I'm going to go down in frequency and we can see that the needle is moving and it's going to drop so right now I'm at three quarters that'd be 0 0.75 and we want to go point about 0 0.7 so I'll just fudge it a little bit, just a little bit right before uh, three, the three quarters mark and we're at 56.69 so 56, round it off to 56.70 56.70 and this is the yeah. lower and then the upper, now what I'm going to do for the upper is I'm going to go back up until we hit the peak and we know we're at the resonance and then I'm going to continue past it, and then it's going to start dropping off because we're no longer in resonance. So I'm going to go down to the same point. We're at three quarters, and I'm just going to go a little bit past that. Okay, about right there is about the same. And so we're at 56.79. So we can say 56.80. 56.80. Okay, so then we're going to get the calculator, and we're going to look at the entire spread between the upper and lower which is 56.80 minus the lower 56.70 and that's 10 kilocycles so the um, bandwidth is 10 kilocycles then what we're going to do is we're going to divide the resonant frequency of 56.74 kilocycle 56.74 divided by the bandwidth which is 10 kilocycle and we have a multiplication factor of 567.4 and Eric had previously measured 568 and we're at 567.4 so we're essentially getting the same exact numbers but we just wanted to get this on video uh, just to show what it is with the ground plane and uh, so how much did the ground plane bring the frequency down that's what we're after and it increased the magnification factor and it brought the frequency <clears throat> down so these numbers here was this with the ground plane yeah the ones on so, top are without the ground plane and the ones uh, below are with the ground plane okay so if we draw a line between that this is without ground plane and the bottom one is with ground plane okay so the bandwidth went from 11 kilocycle to 10 kilocycle okay and then the multiplication factor was 518 right 
with the ground plane it's 568 so it increased it 50 times a multiplication factor of 50 by having the ground plane well, not 50 times but or or yeah. uh, by uh, 50 volts 50 yeah well 50 per one number yeah yeah so before without the ground plane one volt in would be multiplied to 518 volts and now with the ground plane one volt in is 568 volts so you increased it by 50 volts uh, per one volt in simply by having the ground plane and this ground plane is not even uh, it's not electrically connected to anything is it's it? It's electrically connected to itself yeah just by the virtue right. of its existence. So show how when you put your hand in down below it doesn't affect anything anymore when you're near the coil and how the same distance in the top it does. Okay so I'm going to lower the frequency till we're at the peak about right here so we have the needle at the peak and, and uh, get down low and slip your hand in on the far edge there. Okay, yeah, so put it underneath the coil and, and see that the meter doesn't move. Okay, so what I'm close gonna, to the ground plane. So what yeah. I'm going to do is I'm going to slide my hand here on the end, and you can see the needle is hardly even moving. I mean, my head is kind of here and everything. Now hold your hand the same distance uh, above the coil and see how far it detunes okay. it. And so we're about 18 inches or something to yeah. that. And so if I lift my hand. Even lifting my hand six inches above, we drop 25% on the meter. Yeah. So if I come up here and I go about 18 inches from it, we're only at 25%. Yeah, so the ground plane it dropped at 75%. Yeah, yeah. Stabilizes, it's less sensitive. Yeah, it's way less sensitive. Right. Because with my hand right here, if we can see this in the video, yeah, we can see that. Yeah, so with my hand down here, like this, it's only dropping that, that meter by 25%, but if I put my hand above it, it dropped at 75%. Same distance. And again, if I just bring my hand right in here underneath, and really if I'm doing it, that only dropped it like maybe 5%, if yeah. even that. But if I go the same distance above, look at that, it dropped it about 75%. So definitely, it, it definitely uh, stabilizes it. We want to get the arc to jump away from ground. It needs that sensitivity, like you showed with your hand. That's what the arc wants to dive into. Those, these arcs don't want to go from ground. They want to go into themselves. Yeah, because conventional thinking would be it would want to go straight down here. Yeah, but it, it, but it, does, it does. But, but it does the opposite. Right, because not. No, it can't see that. Yeah. It doesn't want to jump that way. It's a whole different type of technology. Okay, so we're on the back side of these coils here. And uh, you see in the back of the signal generator, this is all the same setup that we just uh, demonstrated. And uh, do you want to kind of explain the, yeah, the so, lack of the... So the thing that becomes obvious in this way of going about it is there's no primary secondary which is uh, really complicates matters and adds a lot of unnecessary bulk to the whole situation and frequency complications so the way it, this is what Tesla basically finalized on is, is simply extra coil so there's no primary secondary here it's just the fact that this is all one wavelength fraction but this is where the current lives and this is where the voltage lives so there has to be more copper to accommodate the current. In this case, there has to be more dielectric to compensate or uh, accommodate the voltage. So this thing has to be fed by a source of zero impedance or absolutely constant potential. So we have a step-down transformer here. This is 2.5 ohms of impedance. And the important thing is, is to maximize the reflection factor at this point to the extreme where it's infinite. Yeah, this thing is basically a source of constant potential and has absolutely zero impedance. And then that will maximize the action in the, uh, in the resonant coils. So this is, the, uh, this is the big change from the way that people normally look at this stuff. This is where Tesla was going. Yeah. He just lacked because he didn't have vacuum tube oscillators or alter Alexanderson alternators. He had to fool with that damn disruptive discharge, and then you have to have a primary secondary. You're stuck. 
and that just adds all these other dimensions of complications. If you can get rid of that thing, everything will work so much better. And did he allude to that? And he, oh, yeah, that he was knew. right in the beginning. I yeah. gave that in my presentation where he actually said it. The, the, the Colorado the Springs at. talk. Yeah he, yeah, he he picked up on that right away. And then eventually I'll calculate as to why these things ended up so higher in frequency than was expected. But right now the uh, the mechanical labor end of it is kind of leaving the science behind, so that'll have to wait for a while. It's got too many things to build. But now we know this is the finalized electrical unit with its ground plane. And the transformer will have to be, that'll eventually become improved. There have to be a lot more copper in the secondary. I might as well show real quick the progress on our F rack. Yeah. So <clears throat> over here I just got finished. Um, we actually just picked up these panels today from uh, getting powder coated. And this has this uh, choke on here. So this is mounted. This thing is built like a tank. So this is part of the lower section. You've already seen, um, well, by the That's time you not, see not, this. It's not a tank. This is all shipboard construction. <laughs> it has to survive a missile hit. <laughs> this is a new panel that went in. This whole structure right here is all uh, one assembly. And this has the, um, yeah, the contactor and the fuses. Contactor, which is like a, a high power kind of relay. That's for what turns these on and off. These are the potential transformers. Yeah, that supplies the high voltage. And this is the big uh, fuse holder here. And this is one for a three phase, so it's all compact in one, one unit. And by the time you see this, you will already have seen some pictures and or videos of these caps and the choke and, and all this. So we have a little bit of work to do on this board. We'll put some grommets in here uh, for wiring purposes and we're working on this. This panel is uh, the output panel, right? On the well, that's part the, of it. That's the connector panel. That's where this rack goes to the outside world. And this is basically, and this is basically a replica of the audio rack here, where we have this, um, but instead of the two coax like this, we have one coax and one CB style. No, actually, an end connector here, and so HN, the high voltage is HN and the low voltage is N. So as soon as we get the uh, receptacle that goes onto this plate, we'll put it right here and it'll be in the exact same position. So they'll basically be mirror, mirror images of each other. And then we have this control plate here. Um, we have to wait for a couple of the lights, I believe. But uh, we got a, a new or refurbished Greenlee uh, press to make it easy to do these, cut out the uh, holes for the meters. Um, but we're going from bottom up, so as soon as the bottom stuff is done and we have that all assembled, it's just one unit right after another. So we're making pretty pretty good progress on it. And since we can't use the Collins, since the frequency, the resonant frequency of these coils just happens to be in the gap between 4 uh, megacycle and 6.4, it's right in the middle of there that uh, Eric is uh, designing uh, basically uh, a unit uh, dedicated to this frequency range, which is just magically <laughs> not there. Not yeah. magically not there. So that's where we're at right now. So basically, I have to build another one of these from scratch. Fortunately, I won't need the AM modulator, so that will lighten it. But um, so what saved the day, I think we showed this, but I'll point it yeah. out again, what saved the day is this. This is what the whole thing will be built around, the tuning unit. Because this tuning unit... This is the hard part. And, and this is at the range that perfectly fits the gap right. that the Collins doesn't have. So this has the master oscillator and has the power amplifier to drive the big tubes. Everything's all ready, it's just that this panel will come off and then the panel that replaces it will have the holes in all, every, all the same spot and this thing will just go on a rack panel and then around it will be built all the power supply and power tubes and all that kind of stuff and it'll be it will replace the columns for that particular frequency and so we have all these other panels and stuff which are going to be developed into uh, other 
units that'll plug into the RF rack. Here's another one with these ceramic threaded insulators. And That's for the rectifier at the bottom. So this is uh, quite a project, but it's coming together. So stay tuned.